Saturday morning. Test day. You're driving for the first time on a new track in a new car setup. You only learned the track through onboard videos before, with no simulator practice at all. What's the best process? How can you get up to speed safely and efficiently? In this video, I will teach you my process to find speed in a new combo. The same process can be applied anywhere safely and it is the best way for you to build confidence and consistency by testing the car grip in predictable ways. Normally the first time on track is with very used tires and they are cold. With cold tires, do not trail brake and also be careful with too much throttle and wheel spin. The best way to get temperatures into the tires without having any bad moments is to induce some understeer by doing the corners with a low amount of throttle. I know this looks very slow, but the car is actually understeering and I almost lost the rear again with 40% throttle at a such low speed. That's because the tires are super cold, the track is super cold, this is the first session of the day. There are two extremely important things you need to learn as soon as you get on track how much the car can stop and how much the car can turn. You need to quickly feel the grip levels so that you can start planning how much minimum speed you are going to carry in each corner and then how late you will be braking. With cold tires, I'm still not braking hard, hard. I'm testing the brakes with 10, 20 bar and feeling that longitudinal G-force and then inducing some understeer mid corner and then braking harder and harder just to feel those G-forces and to gather that information. On the lowest speed corners, you can try to test the balance and induce some more rotation to see how much front the car has and how easily the car is oversteering. On the next two corners, I'm gonna be very patient on the fast turn one, but then I'm gonna coast and turn in more into turn two to see how much rotation the car gives me. Okay, so it actually did rotate a lot and it gave me a little bit of oversteer. So now I can use that information to determine what is going to be my minimum speed on that corner when I'm trying to drive as fast as possible and braking super late. So you see the process on low speed corners, a little bit less throttle mid corner, letting the car rotate more because I can save it easily and on the high speed corners, still inducing some understeer with the throttle so that I can have a stable platform and test the grip with a stable platform first and taking some more time to build up the speed on those high speed corners. Note how I'm still never stomping the throttle, I'm building up the throttle percentages and starting to get some exit oversteer, very carefully building up as I understand more and more how much rear grip I have. Then I start to rinse and repeat. Now I'm starting to brake a little bit harder into the corners. As the temperature comes into the tire, I'm able to brake harder and harder and feel that extra G-force because I'm gonna use that deceleration performance to determine my braking zones when I'm driving as fast as possible. I know that turn one is going to be flat at some point, but I'm just not going to try it like that. I'm still gonna use my same process to build the grip levels, to build my understanding. And then when I do it flat, I'm gonna be 100% confident that I can do it flat. On the high speed stuff, still inducing some understeer, but every lap a little bit faster. Now there's a very fine line on how you induce understeer with the throttle, and it's kind of dangerous if you overdo it. I keep telling you a little bit of throttle will keep the car stable, and that's what I do in this video. But what you're about to see is me doing this, and then this, and then this. I'm testing getting in this low area where I'm going to induce understeer, and this high area where I'm gonna get enough power to the rear tires that is actually gonna maybe cause a little bit of oversteer. So yes, when you try to induce understeer and you have around 33% of throttle percentage, you're gonna get understeer. But if you go to 66 and you go a little bit too much, you might actually get the opposite effect because you're stressing the rear tires too much. So low throttle percentage, low amount of stress, just some weight to the rear tires and the car understeers. But if you go a little bit too aggressive to 60%, that understeer might snap into oversteer, which is why we call it understeer snap oversteer. So especially on cold tires, be careful not to try to induce understeer and be surprised if you get oversteer, it's probably just because you got too much throttle. So this is what I'm talking about, listen. You can hear the three waves of throttle application that I did. That was me testing between understeer 
and having more throttle to see how the balance was affected and whether the car got more and more oversteer. And the process continues, braking a little bit harder, turning in a little bit with more speed, getting back on power, progressively testing the balance on exit with throttle between inducing understeer and getting more power and seeing how the car behaves. You can also see that I keep getting back on power way before the apex, especially on the high speed corners. There is a reason for that, let's talk about this. Let's say we have a regular corner, let's place the apex right here. Now let's assume the safe approach that I'm taking as I'm learning the car. I'm gonna start braking very early, I'm gonna let the speed go down, and then I'm gonna start turning in with some throttle in it. So the throttle, it might be so low that it's kind of just maintaining the speed or even bring it up very slowly. And I'm bringing the speed up, bringing the speed up, bringing the speed up. And then finally, as I see that the car has rotated more, I start getting back on power and I get out of the corner. This is a safe approach that will allow you to understeer throughout this whole corner entry phase. So we were braking on a straight line, now we start turning in with a little bit of throttle, with that kind of throttle application where it's just like this and then we get back on power more aggressively to 100% so that the speed goes up again. This safe approach makes the weight of the car stay on the rear. And then because you slide the front more, then you get a safe, stable way to test how much grip you have. Then the more you get used to the track, the more you start to determine how much speed you carry because this is useful information, right? So on the second lap, what we can do is carry a little bit more speed and then we're gonna start decelerating as we turn into the corner. And now because we're decelerating with the car into the corner, there is more weight on the front tires. The car will be more responsive. It's going to turn more which is where you start getting into a little bit of oversteer and then you can judge how much total lateral load the car can offer you. The maximum amount of grip that you're gonna have from the car is when the tires on the front are working so much that the tires on the rear are also working and the car starts to dense. When the car gets into that neutral state, that's the peak lateral load that you can get because both axles are helping as much as possible to stay on track. So we start building this process and then on the next lap we break even a little bit later and as you can see the minimum speed starts shifting. Before we were accelerating very early and doing the whole corner with the throttle which feels a little bit wrong because it is wrong. We're just using that to test the grip in a safe way and then we're progressively moving this minimum speed towards the apex closer and closer and closer until we reach the ideal state where we're braking late and then we're turning into the corner with the car still decelerating and then getting back on power when we are very close to the apex and then we try to get the best exit possible. When you get to this state though, the car will do the whole first half of the corner with the weight on the front tires which makes it a lot more oversteery and more difficult to control which is why we want to do these steps one, two, three, four, so that we can build the confidence at the same time as we are testing the grip levels of the track and the balance of the car. If you, for example, just guess how late you are braking and you brake way too late and you're doing the corner with a lot of weight on the front tires, you can easily just spin or lock up the front tires and actually go straight because the car is not capable of decelerating that much while you're trying to turn. Now you can see me testing more and more being off the throttle on corner entry. But because I know that the car might be a little bit too oversteery off throttle and off brakes, I'm a little bit more careful on the steering now using the light hands technique. Just turning in with very light hands and feeling how much the car actually points according to how much steering I give. Now we're probably getting to lap 4 more or less and I'm repeating the same process, building up speed, building up the tire temperatures and building up my confidence to try and carry more and more and more speed and now even coast more and more into the low speed corners and try to get the car to rotate more and more until we start getting into the final step which is braking later and later and later. You see, you might not have noticed but since the first corner in the out lap we have been looking for the limit either on the front tires or on the rear tires. At first on the front because it's safer and then as we build confidence, we were trying to find the limit of the rear tires and get the car to dance a little bit. But every corner since we got on the track has been on the limit. Never just cruising around. You're always testing, you're always getting as much data, as much information as possible to build up the speed as fast as possible because you don't have infinite time in real life. Now, I'm gonna be honest with you. 
being on the limit of the front tires does not mean that I'm carrying as much speed as possible, it means that I'm at least testing the grip in some way. I'm still a racing driver that takes a long time to find the limit, and all this process that I'm showing you that it's taking me 4 or 5 laps, some fast drivers can take that in 2 laps, maybe some just the out lap they already get as much information as I am getting right now, because I don't have that much experience, so I take my time to learn and to get the data very progressively. Over the years since I transitioned from sim racing, I am starting to learn the track a little bit more quickly, but it's still too slow, and that's just because of confidence. I'm not brave enough to already get the car into oversteer on high speeds, because I'm afraid of crashing my own car, I'm afraid of hurting myself, and I prefer to take the safe approach to learn with 100% certainty that I'm not going to crash on that next corner. Let's take, for example, turns 1 and 2. They are the most confident-based corner. It's a flat left-hander that leads into a very hard-breaking zone, and if you get it wrong, you lose a lot of time, you can crash, you can spin. It's very, very technical and precise. At the same time, you have to be brave to carry that full speed and do the first corner flat. I'm gonna show you the progression of that corner through the laps. See, it took me almost a whole session to do it, while some fast drivers that already know the track are probably capable of doing this in three laps. Of course, this was my first time in this track, and like I said, I still don't have that much confidence, I prefer to take my time to do it, but I did it! And there's still so many drivers that drive in this track for so many, many months and still don't have the balls to do this point of flat. As the session went, the closer I got to the limit, the more different topics I had to think about in my technique, like the effects of downshifting or the brake pass balance, how much I was trail braking to the corners, what lines I was taking, whether I was doing more V-shaped lines or U-shaped lines, what steering traces, all of that being of course virtually impossible to talk about in just this video, but I do have a whole online course about advanced car handling dynamics, the motor racing checklist, which I strongly recommend you try it because there's a refund guarantee if you don't like it. Now I will show and analyze my fastest lap which matched the fastest lap time of that test day from the fastest drivers, showing my thought process during the lap afterwards. After a full session driving, here is what I learned the most that helped me find so much lap time in one session. First of all, as I turned into this corner, it is definitely supposed to be flat. You can actually see me still kind of dragging the brakes here. This is a confidence issue, but it wasn't slowing me down that much because I was still floored at 100% throttle. And one thing that you have to notice here is that because we are not trail braking, the steering trace is actually pretty direct. We go straight to loading fully the car as much as possible because it's very important to bring the car as much as we can to the left side under this braking zone here. So as you can see, this next corner to the right, very important to stay on this left half of the corner. And you can actually see how much rubber there is on the whole track because many cars fail to bring the car to the left and end up having to brake totally on the right 
which completely kills their exit. So it's very important to not only do this corner flat, but flat and on the limit of the grip, trying to get that load to the left as much as possible and bringing the car as much as you can. As you can see, this is on the middle of the track. I can potentially bring the car even more. There is again a confidence issue to really pull the car more and more and more to the left. As much as I'm turning here, I could potentially turn three, four, five more degrees to the left to pull the car a little bit more. But I was afraid of hitting this curb and snapping and losing the car to the left here. And then as soon as you get here, the most important thing is to relax your hands because we're going on the brakes right now pretty hard and the car has to be 50-50 balanced so that we break on a straight line. So as soon as I relax my hands, I break on a straight line pretty hard, 36 bar here, downshifting as quickly as possible, getting that engine braking to help slow down the car and then starting to trail brake into the corner. As you can see, on the beginning, we were careful about trail braking. We were trying to just induce some understeer, turning into the corner with the throttle. Right now, I am with all the weight on the front tires. I'm trail braking heavily, getting the car to rotate as much as possible and doing that lovely trail braking all the way until the maximum rotation point, which is right here. And then getting back on power pretty aggressively. Now you can see me going straight to 50% because I want the car to actually get that extra rotation. And now I'm dancing with the car and doing micro corrections as it slides all the way to the outside. Now using the curb and staying on the left, preparing for my next two corners. Now this is going to be a flat corner, which is pretty scary. And again, because it is a flat corner, because it's not a trail braking corner, you can see me turning pretty fast on my steering. Let's watch this full time. Boom. Right away, immediately loading the left side and getting the car to already start getting that lateral load to the right so I can bring the car as much as I possibly can to the right because we need to stay on this side and open up for the next corner which is to the left and we are going to break so because we have a flat corner leading into a corner where we break we need to maximize the flat one and bring the car as much as possible to the right to prepare the corner where we need to decelerate if you need to decelerate then you definitely need to prioritize this one the flat one if it brought me all the way here on the limit it would not be ideal and i would have to actually lift a little bit so that i could connect these two corners and still have a very good line for the next one but because we had enough grip to do this corner flat and bring the car all the way to the right then it is flat definitely bringing the car all the way to the right now lifting and touching the brakes just a little bit to get the car to point and then immediately getting back on power to control the oversteer and to keep the car stable on this high speed corner. And as soon as I get back on power, you can see me dancing with the steering again because the car is totally neutral now. It's kind of micro sliding all the way to the outside. And after that, I'm gonna bring the car to the left and right to do this flat corner here. Now, one interesting thing that I only learned after doing this whole session is that I could actually bring the car even more to this side because this next corner is very easy. So I don't need to bring the car that much to the left on this corner because this is easy. I'm definitely not on the limit. You can see me doing nothing with the steering, just cruising all the way to the outside, which means that being all the way here is unnecessary for that corner. So what I could have done is actually gotten back on the power a little bit earlier here and gone a little bit more to the outside so that I can benefit from this green delta around here and still do this corner flat which would make me just gain easy free time. Then we go into this hard braking zone, very, very hard initial peak, 59 bar, and then actually micro locking a little bit the rear. I could have moved a little bit my brake bias to the front, so you can actually hear this. You can hear the blue. That's pretty much my engine dying because the rear tires are locking. I immediately heard that and I relaxed my brakes so that I could unlock the tires, but still staying on around that 30 bar to slow down the car as much as possible and then turn in very heavy trail braking and very late apex because this is a closing radius you can see as we start turning in we still don't see the curb we still don't see the curb now we see the curb and that's where i'm aiming i'm getting the car as close as possible to there and then i'm getting back on power right in between what was this is kind of an imagined double apex where the first apex is somewhere around here and then getting back on power before the second apex and then letting the car run all the way to the outside, pretty much on the limit. I could have potentially tried using a little bit of this curb here, but I just didn't want to try it too hard because this was a test day supposed to test my new car setup. And then we go into this next hard braking zone, same braking, this time not so hard because I realized that I had locked the tires. 
and then trail breaking all the way into the end and getting back on power and as you can see as soon as i get back on power you can even see me starting to control the balance and do lots of micro corrections on the steering that means the car is dancing the car is on the neutral steer which is exactly what we want and then bringing the car as much as i can to the left and then trying to carry more speed into this last corner actually made me miss the apex i turned then just a little bit too late and as i noticed that the car was going to miss the apex i kept trail braking too hard i tried to force my way into the apex which caused some oversteer i had to correct it and then as soon as i did this correction i was like well i'm not getting this apex ever i'm just gonna get back on power and try to carry as much speed as i can in this line and let the car go all the way to the curb and then after that i was still way too wide this corner continues going to the right so i had to do a little lift here which probably made me lose two or three tenths even though this is the best lap i did actually carry a lot of minimum speed even though i missed the apex so that is what i learned from this track autobahn country club in my first day in my first test session as i was learning the new setup from the graham ray hall performance team and i hope you enjoyed this video I did two sessions in a row. Yeah. So 40 minutes. Uh, like 49 minutes, yeah. That's why I felt like, did I, am I hallucinating? Did I stop in time or something? Because I was driving and driving and driving. Sim racing is growing more and more, and it's bringing real life racers and sim racers together. This is making the competition level rise like I've never seen it before. So if you want to become that competitive, the secret is in the driving technique more than equipment. My professional driving technique course, the Motor Racing Checklist, already has over 3,000 drivers, including real life drivers and professional eSport drivers, just so you know how good it is. I made this course after coaching over 2,000 drivers in one-to-one -one live sessions, and it contains all the advanced concepts, techniques, and exercises that I've developed with my students over all these years of coaching. It's perfect for any simulator, racing games, and also for real-life drivers wanting to use the simulator to improve their real-life driving technique. This course is about car handling skills, and the goal is to make you find better lap times and consistency. You will learn how to prevent and induce specific behaviors and learn how to feel them earlier so you can predict what's happening with the car with professional precision. By the way, this course has a money back guarantee with no questions asked. So if you don't improve, you get your money back and you can join my Discord to read reviews and ask any questions. Join the course now and I will see you on track questions. Join the course now and I will see you on track 